A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Father Leo Fisher belongs to the Order of Capuchins of the Franciscan Renewal. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Archbishop of Vilnius, Gintiris Grujas, will give the homily. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in today's gospel, we hear and see the disciples in a room with the doors locked for fear of the Jews. What were they afraid of? They were afraid that the same thing would happen to them that it had just happened to Jesus, that they too would be put to death. And even though there were reports that Jesus was alive, they had not yet come to understand what that actually meant. They didn't even understand when the brothers on the road to Emmaus were told by Jesus a description of the prophecies about him through scripture and what that really meant. In our world today, there are many who are no less scared, no less full of fear than those apostles locking themselves in the room. 
We've had several years of a virus that has shut down the world. We have had a war break out in Europe along with the wars around the world. We have a leader of a nation who is so unpredictable that we don't know what he might do next. And Jesus enters into this room. He enters through the locked doors and he says to them, peace be with you. He shows them his hands and his side. It's interesting that these are the things he does several times in this gospel. Peace be with you and the hands and the side. His wounds have become his identity card. That is how the apostles recognize him. The mystery that they witness is his love. The wounds are his love, not only for them, but for all mankind. He is love. And that opens up the mystery of why did Jesus have to die and rise in order to save humanity? Jesus touches upon this when he tells and teaches that there is no greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. But he did not just lay down his life for a friend or a few friends. He laid down his life for all of humanity. But his love poses a great challenge for all of us. As he says in the Gospel of Luke, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your heavenly Father, for he makes the sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same. So he says, be perfect, just as the heavenly Father is perfect. In the Gospel of Luke, this is phrased differently. Be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful. That is a tough challenge in these times when in the news and in the history we see atrocities around the world. We experience a great deal of pain And yet we are called to love, to perfection. The Lord disclosed some of these mysteries to St. Faustina. As she writes in her diary, the Lord says to her, My mercy is so great that no mind, be it of man or angel, will be able to fathom it throughout all eternity. Everything that exists has come forth from the very depths of my most tender mercy. Everything that exists has come from the very depths of my most tender mercy. Every soul in its relation to me will contemplate my love and my mercy throughout eternity. The feast of mercy emerged from my very depths of tenderness. It is my desire that it be solemnly celebrated on the first Sunday after Easter. Mankind will have no peace until it turns to the font of my mercy. The way we are called to go towards this font of mercy is the way of trust, 
And the Lord underlines this to St. Faustina in another place, saying almost the same thing. He says, mankind will not have peace until it turns with trust to my mercy. How profound is this mystery? The Lord explains it to Faustina. Everything that exists is enclosed in the bowels of my mercy, more deeply than an infant in its mother's womb. How painfully distrust of my goodness wounds me. Sins of distrust wound me most painfully. Jesus asks us to trust in him so that we can walk the way of peace with him. He gives us his peace as he gives it to the disciples, and we are called to open up our hearts and receive it, to be able to accept it. It requires an invitation to believe and to trust in him to join our lives, our daily lives, with his divine life. In trust to step into his revealed mysteries. And over the last week, during the Tridium and Easter week, we have been called to delve into these mysteries. The first one is the mystery of the crucifixion, and resurrection of the Lord. We celebrate it, but it remains a mystery. In him, suffering and death are transformed into eternal life, eternal joy, and eternal peace. That is the road that God has chosen to bring us into his peace. The second mystery we celebrated on Holy Thursday in a special way, and that is the mystery of the Eucharist. He gives himself to us in the form of bread and wine so that we may be transformed more and more into his image, living more profoundly as part of him, as part, as members of the body of Christ. And today's mystery, the mystery of mercy is the source for these other two mysteries. To give ourselves over to the mystery of his love, knowing full well that our own love is imperfect. Through him we see how love can live and transform an imperfect world. In St. Paul's hymn of love in 1 Corinthians, we tend to listen to the words at our natural level. It's a reading we often use during the sacrament of matrimony. And we think, how nice, the love of one person to the other and what it could be. Let us listen to those words, but in your mind, listen to them from God's perspective as he looks upon a sinful world and how he pours out his love on that sinful world. God's love is patient, it is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous. It is not inflated and it is not rude. It does not seek its own interest, it is not quick-tempered. God does not brood over injury, does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. God's mercy is so great that it 
envelops God's righteousness. And we are called to enter into God's love, into his mercy, and into his peace in a special way today. The gospel ends with the words, these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. To enter into these mysteries, we are called to believe, and we are called to trust in God's mercy for us and for the whole world. Like a little child who takes his father's hand and lets him lead him because he trusts in him, the Lord today asks us in that same type of trust to hang on to him. May the prayer that the Lord asked Faustina to write under the image be echoing in our hearts today and every day. That wonderful prayer that puts us on the right path. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen.